I had the idea of filming in the library and showing you the books that I picked up, but I timed it wrong because the library here in the town where I live is right next to the high school and the high school just let out for lunch. So suddenly the whole of the little downtown is crawling with teenagers on their lunch break. And if you've had teenagers, you know they're not quiet people as a rule, especially in groups. However, I thought I would show you the books anyway, because I'm sitting in the park in the in the farthest corner from noise and traffic and everything else. But um, let me show you a couple of books I got. I don't really know anything about these. I just found them on the library site and thought I would try them. This one is called Breath by James Nestor, The New Science of a Lost Art. And the reason I ordered it and requested it in was um, because uh, as I mentioned in my previous video, this issue I've been having with cortisol and and sort of, I don't know, latent stress or whatever. In the research I've done, it, I've found a lot about breathing and how to breathe to calm your body down. So I thought, well, I will learn, I'll learn something about it. And um, I'll just read a little bit about what it says. No matter what you eat, how much you exercise, how skinny or young or strong you are, none of it matters if you're not breathing properly. Well, I'm not really skinny or young, and not, I'm certainly not as strong as I have been, but if I'm not breathing properly, I guess it affects a lot of things. So there's that one. And I've also picked up another one um, on the same topic. This one is called, let's just get it around here, The Breathing Cure by Patrick, Patrick McCune. Develop new habits for healthier, happier, and longer life. 26 breathing exercises and natural solutions for anxiety and panic, allergies, insomnia, lower back pain, and a whole bunch of other things. So I thought this is maybe something I could benefit from learning about. So I'm going to see what, what I can find out about that. And on some other topics, I, I like um, cozy mysteries. So I found this is a spin-off from Father Brown and it's uh, Sister Boniface Mysteries. I don't, this is season one. I don't know if they ever did a season after this, but uh, I thought we'd take a look at that. And I've also got a Rough Guide to England, which um, I got in because I'm planning a trip to England this summer with my daughter. And she's going for a course, which I mentioned in my last video. And um, and we like to travel together. She said, I could go alone, but it's so much more fun with someone. So I said, well, I won't turn down that opportunity. Anyway, and then I saw this one. Uh, on the shelves when I came into the library. It's called To Fall in Love, Drink This by Alice Faring. And it's a wine writer's memoir. And I picked it up because it just sounded fun. And, all, and also because, um, I'll be honest, the type is big and it looks like a quick read and it just sounds like a fun thing to do. Anyway, um, I should probably get back home because I have work to do and uh, some paintings to work on. And um, then we'll get started on some other things. I've got um, a whole bunch of new ephemera I've cut out of the calendars, the old calendars that I showed you last time. So maybe I'll make the theme of the glue book this time something using those. There's lots of florals and pretty stuff. So we'll talk. Here's the piece that I started last week. Now I'm, I'm always working on more than one thing. And I think that's, I do it on purpose because sometimes you need to sort of think about things as you're going along. Not always, but often you need to kind of let things percolate a little bit. I think what I need to do here is number one, get rid of some of these colors. 
And if I'm finished what I want to do here today, fairly soon, I will switch over to glue book because I've also got something kind of going on there that I would like to get working on. So I might just do one color here and then we can be off and running elsewhere. So with regard to momentum, I'm pretty good at, at going from one thing to the next to the next. And I but I still have to be careful about about getting too many things going at once because then you just lose focus. And I started to realize like I you know you watch things on online and I watch I follow a lot of people uh, especially in the arts world and crafters and decor and all that kind of stuff. And I find myself saying often, oh, maybe I should do that. Or maybe I should. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. I started to realize that if I'm starting to say, maybe I should, over someone else's idea, it's time for me to stop and go, maybe I should not follow that trail. Maybe I should not do that thing. Maybe I should not, because otherwise, I'm a great starter. I love starting things. And um, I tend to finish things, but only if I'm, I'm still really engaged with them. So sometimes I start something, and it, without thinking it through, and I don't know if you do this too, without really thinking something through, I go, oh, I should do that. Instead of going, if I do that, what happens? How does this play out? And and what if, you know, all the what ifs? What if I don't have time for it? What if I don't enjoy it? What if it's not part of what God's plan for me is, for example? Um, what if I have to use skills I don't currently have? What if I find out I don't even like this thing? What if it's way more work than I expect? So I tend not to do that, which gets me into trouble. Because I, I'm so optimistic about most things that I just think, oh, that won't take me long. That would be easy to do. And the fact that a lot of things are easy for me to do makes it a little bit harder for me to say no to them because I can go, well, I could do that. However, I, th I hope I'm getting a little bit better at this by saying just because I can doesn't mean I should. So when, now when I get this idea of maybe I should do that, I'm trying very hard to follow it up with maybe I should not. Maybe I shouldn't do that. So what about you? I, don't, I, I, I doubt that I'm the only person like this. Who gets a little bit carried away with ideas because if you're watching me you're probably creative and like to do new things as well and um, in my in my email newsletter this week um, I talked about dabbling and how it's fun to dabble in things because it it helps you to figure out whether you like them or not I'm just gonna stop this right now here's my gluing surface. I like using this because if it gets glue on it, it's not like this. So I, this is easier to clean. So I just wanted to do a bit of a catch-up. Last time I talked about cutting things out of these old calendars I had. And look at it all. I mean, there's just, I, I gleaned so much. Anyway, I just put it in this tray to have a place to put it. So I thought once again I would use this old book, The Islanders, by Archibald Hurd. And I, I just opened it up a while ago and read a few things. It said, it was talking about how um, people are complaining about the fares of, to you know, go on a ship going up so much and figuring there was collusion and all that kind of thing. This book was was published in 1926. So to say there's nothing new under the sun is probably pretty close to the truth. Now here's the center of the, um, the signature and these signatures are 
really small, like they have three sheets in them. I think I might take this out because, just because um, I'm going to be adding so much bulk to it, especially with these because they're kind of cardstock. Instead of risking tearing the paper, which I don't want to do, I'm going to cut. That's exactly what I wanted it to do. Okay. So there's some nice papers I might use for doing some watercolors on or something later on. Let me know if you think that would be a fun idea. Now for this one, I don't, I'm, I'm starting with no plan whatsoever. Um, I, but I think I'll use some of these things anyway to get going on it. Um, just not excited about it. This one has a double thing on it, which is going to make the book so heavy. Um, and then we've got these big pieces, which are, wow, same size as the page. Now that's tempting, but there's already so much in the picture. Do I want to cover it up? I think I do. I think I want to cover it up. Anyway, you can see what was on the other side as well. But I've got like all these things, little birds and all kinds of stuff. Here's the one that's all about the garden. I'm in the garden. That's pretty busy. I think I'll go with this one because it's right now it's February and um, the weather here is still quite un unpleasant, un inclement. Um, for example, pouring rain and yesterday we had wind so the, the power was flickering. There's uh, Where I live is amongst mount I'm in a river valley amongst mountains and there's a lot of trees so when the wind blows trees can come down especially if it's a fierce wind will come down and they will um, hit the power lines and knock them out tear them down or whatever and then suddenly we've got no power for who knows how long or we've had ice storms whoops don't want that upside down and the ice storms do the same thing. They break the trees and the trees come down and they break the power lines and all that. Okay. So there's my first page. Here's my handy, handy rag. Okay, let's see what else I've got over here. I like this piece. I need to do some cutting here. Let's go this way, push that back a little bit. This has um, some marks and stuff on it and some writing because it was part of a calendar. So I'm just going to take that off and straighten this edge up. To sort of follow up on the on the library books that I showed you, I started reading one last night, the one called Breath, which is very interesting. Yeah, surprisingly interesting, because the author, uh, like I'm, I'm hardly into it at all. I'll put it at the bottom. Um, the author starts by by talking about how uh, the shape of the human beings' skulls have changed over the course of time based on basically breathing through your nose and how breathing through your mouth, especially a lot, actually changes the shape of your mouth and your nasal passages and all that kind of stuff. It was like, whoa, really? And he described his childhood. I thought, well, that sounds like mine because I've had um, allergy problems most of my life. <laughs> this is so cute, but I think it would be too much of the same. 
let me see, do I like that? You know what I want to do here? Um, I'm going to, I've got these chalks. They're called um, pastels. Is this green good? Now, I, I get that not everybody has these kind of things. And that's okay because you don't need a better choice. I just want to make this a little less conspicuous and I might not even end up I might end up not using it like covering right covering it up I might end up covering it up. So these are pan pastels they're they're basically chalk in a pan. Don't use them on your face. They do kind of make a mess. Okay, I like that, but now I don't like the dark green background. So, what will I do here? What will I do? Put something light on the background. I have this box of paper scraps, and I will just... Let me just kind of see what'll work here. And it's, you know, basically it's just whatever you feel like. I think I'll put that there and that there. This has a bit of pan pastel on it too. And then that there. Okay, that solves the problem. Anyway, um, I'm quite interested in this book about breath and how it affects your whole body when you don't breathe properly because I suffer from plugged nasal passages a lot and um, if I can breathe at night, I sleep so much better. Sometimes I just go, okay, why can't I fall asleep? Obviously, the reason is because I cannot breathe and... Um, so I'm learning some things about breath and breathing. So I'm looking forward to learning more about this. I actually had to use, start using a corticosteroid nasal spray this winter because I was having so much trouble because the weather changes here constantly and my sinuses react to the change in the weather. Don't laugh because, I mean, Sometimes people say, oh yeah, right, sure that happens. But it's been happening for years. I mean, the, frankly, the main person who scoffed was my husband until one time we went uh, over the mountains, over a high pass. Like my, my nose will plug up when the, when the um, air pressure is really low. So we went over the mountains, we went over this high pass, where of course the higher you are in the mountains, the lower the air pressure, right? My nose plugged solid. And then, I gotta get some new glue here, because this one is getting so sticky. And then when we went down the other side to the lakes, it opened up again. So on the way home, I pointed this out and said, um, notice, and he kind of stopped scoffing at me after that, which is nice because it's nice to be believed when you're talking about your own body. It's like when you go to the doctor and they, because you're female and older, they give you the deary deary approach, you know? that is pat your hand and give you a some sort of trite answer anyway you're not knocking the med medical profession but if you've had anything to do with doctors as a woman in your entire life you know exactly what i'm talking about especially if if the doctor is a man i i have to say i've had to, you know that's how it is so these little guys um let me get out some of my others so we can just have a little variety here. So these are the little labels, which will be fun to use. I've got some of my newer ones. I don't think I'll use those. 
I have these washi ones that have to be cut out individually. I might use that. Who knows? Um, but these are the ones I'm thinking of with the books. So I'm going to try not to mix them in with, with these calendar ones because these ones are actually stickers. I might even get out a cupcake here to use with the tea. All right, there's a good starting place. I've acquired so many things. I think I'll put that right there just to throw in some pink. And these are stickers too, and they're they're available on my site uh, at Summer Bay Studio. And you can just print and download and cut them out. You can cut them out or you can cut them out with a Cricut. You can cut them out by hand, whatever you want. And they're extremely inexpensive. All right. Um, I want something that kind of shows up. That one is too long. A lot of these are by the same artist and you can tell. So I don't, I don't want to have like a feature of her work only. This is a different artist from this. I like that because it's a, a contrast in color and and style, but I like this blue. Let's do that blue one. The, I love these because they're actually watercolor paintings and I, I didn't do them. I could have, but I didn't think of it. So that's how it goes. There's so many things that you could do if you're creative that you can do, you know, and I'm sure you find this as well. You're creative enough that you can think of all kinds of things to do and start all kinds of projects. And then you lose momentum. I'm coming back to that little one. It's a chickadee. We have chickadees around here and we've got a bird feeder. My husband's an avid bird feeder. Anyway, he... Um, we get a kick out of the chickadees because they're so cheeky and they're tamer than a lot of the others. So they, uh, but they're smaller too. So if there's a bigger bird at the feeder, they won't try and bully their way in. They'll kind of sneak in the back door when the other bird's back is turned and just grab a seed and take off. That's cute. This looks a little tipped. Some things. You just don't have to care about. Like that. You know, years ago, I'm, I'm totally off topic here, but years ago, there was a woman who lived in the same town here. She's long since moved away, and I actually don't even remember her name, but we crossed paths on the street one day, and uh, she, we were just talking, and, and in the course of the conversation, which I don't remember, she said, I have an opinion about everything because, and she did, and she did seem to have them to share all the time. But after I walked on, I thought that must be exhausting having an opinion about everything. And right then I decided there are things I do not need to have an opinion about. I just don't need to waste my brain power. And so I stopped. I just stopped. It's like, what's going on in the news? Does it have anything to do with me? Do I need to have an opinion about it? Well, it kind of works. Um, do I need to care about it? Because caring actually takes sort of soul energy, if you will. Um, and when you're kind of empathic, what it means is that you're you're always kind of in knots about what's going on in the world. And I don't want to be, frankly. So I just stopped caring about a lot of things that have nothing to do with me. I stopped having opinions about things that um, don't, that for me to have an opinion about won't change a thing. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what to put in here. And actually, it gave me a lot of peace taking that sort of stance.
because it uh, frees, frees up a lot of brain space for one thing for doing creative things if your mind is everywhere on everything it's going to be hard to um, concentrate on things so for me being I'm, I'm fairly empathic meaning i feel other people's feelings and sometimes i have to actually guard myself from that Otherwise, it's a bit overwhelming. Okay, I'm I am thinking plant on plant. This is pretty, but it doesn't mean I can't cover it up. We're going a little bit wildly flowery. Got these black and white ones as well. I'm going to put these away because it's a little too much. A much of a muchness. I just finished a puzzle, a uh, jigsaw puzzle I got for Christmas, which is uh, The Art of Edith Holden. Like, um, if you're not familiar with her, this is her book, The Nature Notes of an Edwardian Lady. And she's, it's like a diary with all the sketches and everything. So somebody took all those things and put them into a series of puzzles. for the seasons and my husband got me one for Christmas he got me summer because I like summer best so I started it I did a different puzzle that I got for Christmas I actually got two this year and um, I did it in a month and this one I did in three weeks and here's a picture of it so it's so cute and the artwork is so pretty all right, I have decided that these lilies kind of match this thing underneath it, that watercolor. So I'm going to use this over top of it. I would like to um, also put a little bit of trim around here somehow. Um, just so that it's not just somebody else's picture. I'm going to make it my own, if you know what I mean. Something like that, perhaps. Or even... Oh, I took all these, this trim. See, I put my, my cupcake down there. I'm going to have to clean up as I go here, otherwise I'm swamped with stuff. I'm going to put this up in the corner and then probably call it quits because I'm getting a bit overwhelmed here. All right. Uh, where was I? I probably left some subject in the middle, but that's what happens when I'm working on creative stuff. I just kind of go from one thought to the next. What I did want to talk about with regard to momentum is in order to, to gain momentum on something, you have to actually focus on it for a while. And one of the best books I've found for that, I always go to books like first. So I'm going to show you this book. I had it from the library two or three times and then finally I just ordered it and bought it because I keep going back and reading it and it, it's called Essentialism The Disciplined Pursuit of Less by Greg McKeown um, it talks about keeping stay, not just staying focused but elim eliminating stuff in your life that prevents you from being focused so and doing better at the things that are essential or that matter the most. So where was that page with the big writing? Let's see if I can find that. Anyway, I'll put a, a link below. Play doesn't just help us to explore what is essential. It is essential in and of itself. 
Good thing to remember if you tend to work too much, which sometimes I do. Anyway, I would recommend that book and have a look at the link below. You can order it. But um, if you're going to get any kind of momentum, you have to eliminate stuff that gets in the way of that. That's a cute little thing. So I'm constantly, like I mentioned earlier, if I say, oh, maybe I should, now I'm going, uh, hold on a minute, maybe I shouldn't. Because if I want, want to get any momentum with my projects and with, you know, things that really matter to me, I'm going to have to eliminate stuff that doesn't really matter. I'll put that one there just because it's blue. So part of the, one of the things I'm working on right now is a body of work in acrylic painting. So obviously glue books isn't all I do. I'm a watercolor and acrylic artist. And um, I'm going to be working with some stores and galleries and things like that with my art, but I've got to get something together. So that's what I've been working on. And in order to, to actually get momentum on it, I have to have time to do it, which means I need to eliminate what is not essential. Sticking up was kind of bugging me. Which I've been trying hard to do. However, um, I'll have to keep you posted on that. But I, in my last video, I asked the question, would you like to see a video every week or is every two weeks enough? And, and a lot of people said every week, please. So I'm going to try and and make that happen. I have to look at my schedule and kind of go, okay, well, like what can I eliminate? What isn't important? And I think I've got it kind of figured out, but I will let you know and we will find out. You will you will know by the fact that I have a video every week. Anyway, for now I'm going to leave this like this. Please uh, add your comment about having it every week if, if that's important to you. And if it's not, just say no, every two weeks is fine. In the meantime, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, click the little bell so you get the notifications when I do have a new video and click the like button because that helps the algorithm know that you like it and other people might too. And I will see you next time.